Hey everybody, uh, it's Bust with Expedition Trial number 476. We're embarking on the uh, the, the final leg uh, of our journeys here. If you weren't familiar with the uh, the news that was dropped yesterday, uh, Riot has announced that uh, expeditions will be sunset. And so uh, they're going to make it until uh, about May. Uh, I think that will be with the release of the next big set. Uh, that seems a little bit off cadence, but I think that's how things work. Maybe this set just came out then there'll be like a champion expansion and then uh the the new set comes out after that in may uh, i don't really know but uh that's how long we got and so uh you know uh, I've, i'm gonna make it to 500 <laughs> we're we're so close i i can't just stop at 475 uh and so we'll make it to 500 expeditions and then we'll uh, continue on our journey elsewhere and so uh yeah if you, if you didn't catch my my video on kind of the the loss of expedition uh, i'm not exactly sure uh, where I plan to take things. I'm up for suggestions down in the comments. I have some uh, some time to get, uh, you know, acquainted with new games and such as we attempt to uh, to take this up to 500 trials. Uh, but uh, I do want to keep it in the space of playing uh, children's card games, <laughs> uh, playing them in the digital landscape, uh, and playing limited formats. And then I, I try to keep this in the space of uh, I don't want to be explaining your first draft to you. I, I feel like that's too basic for what I like to do. Uh, I don't want to be the person taking, uh, you know, five people from Diamond to Masters. Uh, I want to be in that space in the middle as to where, uh, you know, if you're a, a platinum player and we can help you get to Diamond, or if you're a gold player, we can help you get to platinum. I, I feel like that's the, uh, the, the kind of the sweet spot of the content I'm trying to create. And so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll find a space. I'm, I'm open for suggestions, uh, but uh, there's just a, a handful of games out there, so we may find ourselves in, uh, into the lands of a Hearthstone or into the lands of a uh, 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 Eternal. And so, we'll see, but that is for the future. For today, we are jumping in on trial number 476, our last one uh, before the new cards come out, right? No, we got two days. We got two days before NAR comes out. Okay, we got we got to make it to... Uh, to uh, the 16th for that. And so, uh, with these champions here, all of these are reasonably strong. I, I feel like we've touched on both Pantheon and Riven here recently. Uh, and for a touch of nostalgia, why not, right? A touch of nostalgia, let's jump into this Fiora archetype. And so, uh, we'll jump over to the site real quick. Uh, and so, as far as the site goes, we are on ftpbus.com. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, update it for the release of the new cards. I have a feeling uh, the Riot spreadsheet is not going to get touched again, and so I'll collect data for about a week, uh, get the Expedition Helper updated with the, the minimal amount of effort that I can, uh, and then that will be kind of that once May rolls around. Uh, and so it, it should get updated pretty quickly for the new archetypes. Uh, it costs me physical dollars to uh, keep the bots up and running for the Spreadsheet 2 project, and so uh, I don't really feel the desire to to spend like 12 or $20 or whatever just to uh, to keep that updated for uh, the matter of a few weeks. But uh, it should still be a decent resource for when uh, the new cards are coming out and add us. Otherwise, I can't just scroll through this thing and, and pull up the Fiora and stuff. <laughs> and so uh, let's do get this pulled up. We'll get the Shield Wall and the Fiora. Uh, you know, uh, this does pair off with uh, Sejuani for some reason and... Uh, uh, it's meant to be uh, somewhat of a go tall type archetype. There we go. I finally got our way to suit up. And so you should be, you know, much more familiar these days with the go tall strategies, with the Pantheon running around in full force, the faded units out and about. Uh, you, you get a, a better taste uh, of what can happen when you build uh, all of your cards into one unit. And so uh, the, the idea with this archetype was that we're playing Fiora. She wants to have this kind of OTK prowess where she gets these four slays in combat. And then you get to boost her up with these uh, things like Laurent Bladekeeper to give her a bunch of stats, uh, Redoubled Valor to come out here and double her stats. If you scroll, scroll over to Freylord, uh, there's the various combat tricks that give her a boost. And that's the kind of idea here is you're using Freylord, you're using uh, Demacia to make one uh, super unit 
and then it turns out that super unit could kill your opponent uh, without attacking their health. And so that strategy, eh, it's kind of meh, it's kind of whatever. Uh, I, I think the, the Fiora build around in its own is still just good enough. And so the big things we look for Fiora build arounds are the barriers. The, the most important cards we could be taking are Bright Steel Protector, uh, Prismatic Barrier is the big one, and then Repost. Uh, the downside to this archetype is Repost does not live in it, uh, but you can still typically find them throughout the draft. And then kind of the sequence we can, sequencing we're looking for in these games is we don't play anything the first turn, don't play anything the second turn, we've banked up that three spell mana. Going into turn three, we play Fiora, and then we have the spell mana to cast a Prismatic Barrier and protect her from that turn forward, right? We win a combat with Barrier. Opponent says, oh, I'm sad. I can't do anything to your Fiora. We go into the next turn, we play a Repost. Go into the next turn, we play a Bright Steel Protector. Whatever. It's just from turn three forward, we're looking to get Fiora into a barriered combat that she can win. Uh, that that is our big strategy here. Now, uh, the downside to chasing this uh, this kind of thing is, what do we do if we don't draw Fiora? Right, we have to have some kind of backup plan uh, for the games we don't draw Fiora, or the games where our opponent just has like vengeance or something. Right, and that uh, comes down to these other challengers here. We'll try to find Laurent Protege. This bro is really strong on his own. He's working on a nice man bun here, uh, and this is the kind of premier. Uh, answer to not having Fiora. The other card we'll be looking for are Challenger Dragons. Uh, Screeching Dragon is a card that can take over a game on its own. Uh, and so, yeah, that's it. That's the big strategies here. We'll see if we find a uh, a good combo for our Fiora in the next pack. And then in the event that we don't, you know, if none of these cards pair up nicely with Fiora, uh, then we can draft something differently. She still makes a, a reasonably strong supporting champion. You know, a, a three attack challenger for three mana is not bad. Bright Steel Protector is always good. Uh, and so uh, everything can be fine even if we don't have to draft around her. And then looking at these, uh, not the strongest set of cards, right? I don't like drafting three factions, so I'm going to stay away from Vagar. If we want to draft Vagar, we have to draft Shadow Isles, Bandle City. Then we're just going to be stuck with these Demacia cards. I, I don't really want to do that. If you do, for whatever reason, want to draft three factions, Darkness Rising probably is an okay one, uh, given that... Uh, you should still see, like, Darkness Rising throughout every draft pick, and there's not too many Darkness cards outside of this archetype, right? You're not really hamstringing yourself because uh, it should just be, like, Death Door Thresh that has a, a card or two. There's, like, two archetypes that have a couple cards littered in, uh, but it, it's not that bad. Uh, choice number two here is Echo. Uh, if you draft Echo, you're, you're just going to be drafting Sump Workers. There's no... Uh, combos within the predict archetype that leads to having Fiora OTK decks. Uh, so we could look towards him. Uh, at the end of the day, we're just going to be drafting some workers, which we've done recently, uh, or hamstringing Fiora, which if we're going to hamstring Fiora, uh, we can do that with this Trundle. And so, you know, you can see come like the synergies they're getting going on here, right? If Fiora still had three health, maybe we could give her regenerate <laughs> and then uh, the regenerate would let her grow in the future. Uh, but I, I, I don't think that's ever going to come together. But this uh, Frey Lord option seems like the best of these options. And so that's where I'm going to go with this. Uh, there's not going to be any like real combos with this Trundle. Uh, I'm just curious what combat tricks live here, right? If we uh, take a peek. Where are you at, my friend? Trundle. This spelling is so hard. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, I want to see if the things like Troll Chant live here, which it doesn't. I wanted to see if we have... Uh, any of the cheap one mana combat tricks in the Elixir of Iron, which is a no. Brittle Steel, also a no. Uh, is there just literally anything, right? Anything that helps us win a combat. Cold Resistance, that's it. That's going to be our ticket to victory right here. Just giving something plus zero, plus two for five mana. Uh, not a lot here. Not a lot. Icy Yeti, technically. Take Heart, sure. And troll gifts, man. Okay, this isn't the best archetype pairing, but uh, I think it's still going to be better than Echo. There's just absolutely nothing in P and Z that could help, uh, and I don't want to be in the darkness deck. So this is just kind of where we're stuck. I pulled up troll gifts here. I am kind of interested in troll gifts now that they printed those uh, the new regenerate cards. I, I could see a card like this being really powerful, right? Giving something uh, plus two, plus two for two mana permanently is a really good deal. Uh, and so I, I could see troll gifts really... Uh, seeing a boost here with the, the release of the Udir cards and to a lesser degree, uh, the release of the uh, uh, Nar cards. But uh, not for us here today. I have to see what turns up here to help our Fiora. 
So, okay, wow, these packs are bad. These are bad. The The problem with things like Laurent Duelist uh, are, are that most of our units just have Challenger anyways, and so it doesn't really do anything. Uh, over here, Faces of the Old One is unplayable, and down here we have a Battlesmith for a deck that shouldn't have any Elites in it. And so, I mean, the Tusk Raider is really powerful, uh, but I, I never want to be building a Fiora OTK deck to where I'm not playing three Fioras. And so this is a, uh, it's just like a weird set of cards to have to play, but that's where we're at, <laughs> you know? Well, we got to do the best with what we can. And man, these just continue to be terrible. This is painful. Uh, and so I'm going to go with the Yeti Yearling Sentry. Uh, some of the problems with these are, we again, we like if things are happening right and perfect, like sequencing perfectly, we're not going to play anything the first two turns. And so uh, we're not really looking to get these guys on the board. Uh, but, I mean, these are the only kind of playables. Like, the, the Persuader is not going to be super useful. I guess he's statted nicely, but he's never going to get Challenger. And then the Stony Suppressor ultimately worries me as we're trying to win with a uh, with spells, right? We're, we're basically winning the games with our barrier spells, and making them more expensive uh, does not help that out. And so, whew, okay. <laughs> wow. Wow, these cards. This is just like a, the, the brutalist of drafts we've experienced in a while. Uh, but coming out of this, we'll take the Cataclysm. It's a, it's a free attack kind of thing. If we do somehow find barriers, uh, we can use it to attack with Fiora twice in the same turn and perhaps get an OTK a little bit faster. But man, these packs are bad. Stop showing me, <laughs> stop showing me all of these Targon cards. It's insane. All right, well, we got a combat trick here in Brittle Steel. That's as good as we can hope for. Oh, man. Oh, man, this draft. Okay, so, I mean, this is our second Yeti card down here to the right. I could see us going for it. Uh, I'm not going for Chain Vest. Uh, I mean, it's, like, okay. There's a world where it's not horrible if you're playing against, like, a lot of Bandle City and you're using it to make challenges onto your opponent's, uh, like, one attack units, but there's just, like, so many matchups where it doesn't do anything, and then Battlefield Prowess is trash. But man, this is, like, the only thing that I can see that's going to, like, push us on theme, though. I'm kind of, like thinking, like, what if if we just pick up cards like Battlefield Prowess, uh, and then that helps us jump into um, the, the other Fiora archetypes? But I, I think, like, this is the point where we have to be like, okay, we're halfway through the draft and this isn't coming together. If we start to find some barriers later, or if we start to find some troll chance, like, maybe we can build towards Fiora. But I, I think at this point we have to kind of, like, concede that that's not working, and think that we're going to build towards maybe Yetis, like with the Trapper down here, and maybe we can, like, do something with Trundle. Uh, I just don't think picking up Battlefield Prowess Chain Vest ever puts us into, like, a winning deck. So I'm going to let those go. Down here we have two Flash Freezes. I think that's probably as good as we can hope for. Uh, the Badger Bear is nice, but uh, I do want some combat interactivity here, and then we'll take these expensives to try and get there. Here's a little bit more on theme with the standalone Fury of the North. Just standalone is so bad now that it costs four mana. You used to be able to make these plays to where uh, you, you do the same bank thing, right? You don't play anything the first two turns. You play Fiora on three, and then you play standalone on Fiora, make her a 6-6 a six, six at the time, a 6-5 now. Uh, but whew, I'm leaning more towards just taking this brittle steel, even though the AoEs aren't that great. You're not, you're not usually trying to AoE away your Fiora, but... I think I just want the Brittle Steel out of this one. Oh, man. Okay, well, here, I, I think we have to take Screeching Dragon. We need some amount of top end, uh, and this is as good as it gets. The War Chef does okay with challengers, but, man, man, this one is tough. All right. Then here, Entreat isn't terrible, right, since Fiora is so important to us. Uh, it's nice being able to draw an extra copy of her now. Um, if we get up to the point where we have three copies of her, it's not as important, but getting that one copy now uh, is. And so I'll pick up the Entreat, not be really happy about it. Here's the big meme combos, right? We got the Unyielding Spirit for her. <laughs> All right. I know how to meme. I can certainly do that for us. And what can we do now? I don't want the Scar Grounds, uh, but the Bright Steel Protector, it's like our, our second barrier card. Fuck. I mean, okay. I'm looking more towards just these two uh, reasonable frostbites. I, I can't take, I can't pick up the scar grounds. Our deck is so far from being good. I don't think we can really just like hamstring it like that. 
Then the last one it just has to be the war chefs, right? I don't want Succumb to the Cold. Faces of the old ones is unplayable. Let's just pick up the two units down here. Oh boy, oh boy, this draft has been has been something. I'll pick up the other Frostbite so I don't have to play the ramp card, but maybe we keep that and just pick up the Blade Keeper. He's reasonably powerful. I do like a Blade Keeper. Let's do this. We don't have enough Yeti stuff uh, to warrant having the Yearling. Whew. All right. All right, guys. Let's step back, take a breather, see what we can do. Well, I know one thing we can do. This always helps. This helps out every time. Apparently, uh, me paying into the free, the free, the, the pay to win lifestyle, uh, wasn't enough to keep expedition around, but I know what I'm about. We still got to come out here and pay for it and we will pay for it in the chain vest. So nice little addition here. We're going to find us a nice Bandal city opponent to attack down all of their one attack units. This is going to be a great addition. <laughs> All right, and off we go. Man, and with that last video, too, is like the, the, the last one with our, uh, our our Karma plus Kennen. It's just a completely brutal draft. <laughs> it's, it's unfortunate to have two in a row. Like, I really don't like that Otherworldly Journeys uh, archetype. I mean, maybe the, pick, the thing to do would have just been, like, right at pick three to pick up the Elites cards and then just hope we can pivot into Elites or something, but... I don't know, but see hands like this and it's like, well, maybe we do have a real deck. <laughs> if the bad cards just never show up, then uh, then maybe it is good enough. Man. All right, yeah. Yeah, to see hands like this, you would never know we just had a completely shitty draft. <laughs> All right. Ember, Ember Maiden uh, doesn't exactly paint that picture, but... <laughs> You're... You're trying to OTK with Fiora, I see. How about you just kill her with your own Ember Maiden? <laughs> oh, did we... Didn't intend on passing, but... I was going to say it'll actually be okay if we do. We can still get to Fiora down now, though. Uh-oh. Well, I guess he can't kill her, right? If he if he has another flash freeze style card, it'll just hit her with the uh it'll hit her barrier. And then I don't think we can like build up enough board here, right? I mean We we could have protected our unit and maybe got enough board, but I I, I think we're like close to having this Fiora OTK. And I, I don't want to just give up on all our spells just yet. Well, <laughs> had I known we were drawing Trundle. Okay, well, I guess it is uh, looking pretty, pretty bleak for, uh, for Fiora. <laughs> Interesting troll gifts. Give a, a permanent boost to old Trundle here. Defiance is our way. Okay, so everything here should be protected. The Ember Maiden should take down the Startled Stomper next turn. Uh, and then we have a full bank into this. It still looks pretty good. What you got for us? Opponent realizes they're being overwhelmed by all of our sweet cards. That's not how you get on board. I did the I did the mathematics on that one. That is not a unit. So I'm curious, like, you just have a handful of, like, Malphites? <laughs> Aurelian Soul, Malphite, both hanging out in the hand? One of them certainly is now. Um, and then they just don't have anything to add to the board. Weird. Oh, 
All right. All right. And I think we're about to make some big brain plays here as the Ember Maiden is looking to uh, kill all of our own units. We can uh, Troll Chant 1, <laughs> or Troll Gift 1 to give it Regenerate, and then we can Chain Vest 1 to uh, to protect it from uh, the Ember Maiden. So let's let's do a little a little burst passing here and see what happens. He's just going to keep sending it back. Okay. Sure. I trundle. It's time to flip. No world breaking today, just regular trundle. Bringing all the big boys at us. Curious if he's if he if he picked up either the Aurelian Soul or the Malphite. Malphite's pretty good here. Uh, oh, this is gonna be a soul, isn't it? <laughs> all right. I thought we were making some headway in this game. Turns out it's not the case. I mean, we can definitely block Aurelian's soul and play Unyielding Spirit on him, but... They're playing Unyielding Spirit on our blocker, but... It's not the most ideal. Now, where do we stand? If we say hook a soul with the pillar... Uh, he's at 9. We just need to get him to 7 and we can kill with Blighted Ravine. It's, it's again, like, no guarantees with these style of decks since we can... Uh, uh, run into the the various like heal cards out of the, this dumb faction, but <laughs> we're getting pretty close here. Harsh winds. That's as good as it gets. Fuck. All right. Unyielding Spirit on Unscarred Reaver. Not a play I ever dreamed I'd be making in my life, but <laughs> that's, that's where we're at. We're doing it. He's about to grow and grow and grow, my dude. He's going to be bigger than Aurelian Soul before he knows it. Maybe this was the the birthing of Aurelian Soul. It was just the, uh, it was just the, uh, the unyielding dude with Unbreakable on him. <laughs> If this if this dude just picked up an obliterate, he certainly doesn't know how to have fun, right? That that's all I have to say about that. Forrest Gump is bringing it in. All right, dude, you got to flip to Alien Soul. Unscarred Reaver, ready for combat. Got him to six. Mm, he does 11. Okay. It's not lethal yet. All right. <sighs> God, go away, animations. What a fucking lame-o. You heard it here first. That dude, lame. Completely lame. We're just out here trying to have fun, putting the unbreakable spirits on our unscarred reavers. And he's like, her dur is a flipped Aurelian soul. It's fucking boring, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but all right we do have improvements here we can mold ourselves more towards this uh fiora deck by taking out the aoes let's pick up the single combat see how it goes
this might be it. It wouldn't surprise me if this was the uh, the first goose egg we've seen in quite a while. <laughs> if we couldn't do it in that game, then I don't know. I mean, I I, I did think we had like uh, potentially we should have spent that brittle steel early and just tried to go wide uh, and not counted on a Fiora OTK being a thing. But man, it's like the Targon units are so small and their interactivity is so bad that he, it's not like he even hit a Daybreak Invoke on the uh, uh, o Obliterate. He hit it on the Nightfall Invoke, which is the full collection of cards. Okay. All right, Fiora makes the appearance. I'm not sure she's going to be like, very good this game. Like, if he just plays, like, the 2-4 here, we're in a, a bit of a bind. But now that we've drawn uh, the Blade Keeper, I don't think we can pass on it. All right. So are we just going in? Could have a, a shaped stone. I don't know. I'm a little worried about this without having the barriers. If this was a game where we had three Fioras, I, I think I might go for it, but uh, we're about to just like kind of pop off here, and so uh, I, I feel much better about this now that she has the additional stats and just doesn't die to a Shape Stone. We can do Trapper, we can do the Bright Steel Protector. Now we have this collection of other uh, interactivities from this point forward. We're looking better, We're looking better. This Frozen Thrall is getting uh, frighteningly low. But other than that, I think this is fine. Do have a pretty good looking board here. Do we, like, give up on our spells just to go for board? Like, this is a tough space in terms of, like, we, we don't have good-looking, like, we I don't think we can OTK out of this game. I'm thinking to do, like, this, and then just these two. So he'll get one good blocker with the 3-3. Three, three. Blue Sentinel just doesn't get a good trade. So now we can play for board if we want to chain vest the Blade Keeper. Okay. Why would he take the stats off Fiora? Huh. All right. Curious if we should have let that go. If he's going to have another card here. It's so weird. Okay. Well, I guess that one makes a little bit more sense, but... We still have all of our targets for Fiora now, which is nice. Alright, hibernating rock beer. Alright, alright. Our squad's getting assembled. Hmm. How bad is that? He's going to be left with a, a Xenotype Researcher. I think we want to play a Troll Gift on something. Probably our tough unit. Or what if we put it on Fiora? I think we want to do it on Fiora. Right, it's going to kill the blue sentinel. I'm going to do two to Fiora. She'll heal back up. Then she can hook the researchers and try to get a flip. Then we still have Trundle on board. It is getting low. This Frozen Thrall's at two now. All right. I think we have to go for some combats. So this is like a little unfortunate in that uh, the Green Fang Warden and Xenotype researchers trade. 
But, I mean, we're so far away from an OTK. I think we need to get out of our heads that that's not what we're doing this game. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <sighs> the bad card bonanza dropping icy yetis. <laughs> I can't I can't say I'm super surprised. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's no no slight to a opponent here. Just this this combination of, of factions is, is pretty terrible. <sighs> I don't know if we can beat the frozen thrall. All right, well, that's, <laughs> that's one way to grow out of the game, if we can uh, hit a plunder and, and tusk raider everything. It's like we don't have that many good units left, though. We have a screeching dragon in here, but most of our, our units that are left are tiny. Pick up one of these uh, one of these zero six 6 unscarred reavers after we double its stats. Okay, so now with the Ice Pillar on board, I'm not sure how these things sequence. I think since it's our turn, uh, countdown's round end though, right? Or is it round start? Round start. Round start. I'm not, I'm not sure what order this is going to go in. I think I'm going to skip the plunder though. I, I just want to open attack next turn. That... Why did that put a thing on our deck? We didn't plunder. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think this Ice Pillar Vulnerable is going to go onto the Preservationist and not uh, the Frozen Thrall. I think our abilities happen first, and then our opponent's abilities happen uh, onto the cards. Since it's our attack token and kind of our turn first. Okay. Not that mad about it. I think we were pretty far away from hitting an OTK. I think this is actually pretty positive. You give it plus one, plus zero. So yeah, put the vulnerable on his strongest unit at the time, the, the Xenotype researchers. <sighs> okay. They're out there. I'll spot them. I think we just have to hit with everything. Right? We're gonna hook the the researchers with the sentry. Uh, probably shouldn't attack with Trundle. We, we just gotta like start throwing stats in front of Ock. Oh, this is gonna be so bad. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we can do this one anymore. So our attacks are so bad in the face of an 8-8. Hmm. Well, frostbites are nice as we're trying to face this thing down, but... Painful. Painful. Guess he doesn't... <laughs> I guess he doesn't have any landmarks in his hand. I think that should be safe to say. That's good for us. Finally gives us a way to take this Frozen Thrall down. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to use our Succumb to the Cold this game. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to use our Frozen Thrall. 
Oh, jeez. So the idea with this is we can't do anything with the pillar. It's just kind of done for. Uh, the This should take the Frozen Thrall to three health. So we can now Brittle Steal it. It's just a matter of seeing what uh, what's going to happen to us next turn. We still want to attack with the sentry. I'm going to attack with everything except the, the Green Fang Warden. Then I would I would suspect he's going to put the 8-3 in front of like Trundle, put the 5-4 in front of the Yeti, uh, probably ignore the sentry, and then we can uh, Riddle Steel down the Frost Guard Thrall. Yep. Okay. Alright, there's, there's, there's one way to go about things here. Just put the unyielding spirit onto Trundle. Well, we got the interactivity here. doing this pre-combat. Hmm. It's not lethal, right? Takes us to one? Okay. <laughs> I mean, we, we have to have something go right. If he has a... Uh, a shaped stone or something, then fine, but I guess I guess that's what we get for not adding weirding stones, but at least we didn't die with the, the lethal on board. Oh god, we're never winning this game. <sighs> okay. We have what, what can we do with this war chef onto the onto the enraged yeti? All right, all right, it's gonna be our first goose egg in a long time. That was pretty painful of a draft, and I mean, uh, the, there were things that we could have done, right? The in terms of uh, we we took Fiora pack one. That's fine. We're we're looking to play Fiora in pack two. We we could have like I. I don't like taking darkness, right? I, I still, if any lesson I can, you know, pass on to you all at this point is three faction decks are just trash. They're horrible. Uh, it's one of the biggest things you can do to hamstring yourself is to go in and pick up a third faction. Uh, and so I don't want to be in uh, the multi-faction darkness deck right from the start. So we'll let that one go. So you can look to uh, the... the um, as like the safer pick there would have would have been the echo but uh, like we just made a video with the the echo and the sump workers i didn't really want to go down that path and so we went with the with the the trundle and now the the trundle archetype is down there in like tier four or tier five it, it suffers from the same fate as you see with that uh enlightenment karma that we drafted in excuse me in the previous video as to where uh, there's just so, so many bad cards in the archetype. You don't want to be playing Cold Resistance. You don't want to be playing any of the ramp cards. There's a bunch of completely dead cards like Faces of the Old Ones. Uh, it, it's a it's a real painful archetype to be in. But I wasn't sure the ability for us to just get away from it, right? If we see uh, a barrier card early, if it will just start to show a suit up and... Um, uh, the other one, the Shin, the Shin Fiora Shield Wall, and so I, I, I kind of felt like, from a, a general strategy standpoint, we should fairly easily be able to pick up Shield Wall, because our start had the Bright Steel Protector in it, and so if like down here at pick one or pick three, I should say, if you're able to pick up, uh, like literally anything that has Barrier on it or a pretty reasonable Demacia pack, 
you should be able to start getting shield wall to start showing up. Uh, and, and this was, you know, kind of a complete fail of a pack here, right? I, I mentioned all the reasons I don't like this pick three. Most of our units just have challenger anyway, so the duelist doesn't do anything. We don't want to be a Fiora OTK deck and playing the Tusk Raider. Uh, and, but, uh, given the packs that were there, it was the, the Battlesmith and Four Demacia, and then it was something completely off theme. And so I, I felt like this at least locks us into suit up. Uh, and continues to have the suit up packs turn up to where, you know, maybe we'll see a barrier. <laughs> it didn't, it didn't quite pan out that way throughout this draft, but I, I think that was a pretty reasonable take here. Uh, and, and then just nothing went right from this point forward. Um, we, we didn't see any barrier cards. We didn't see any combat tricks. It was just like, uh, just this random smattering of garbage throughout, <laughs> throughout the entirety of the draft. It was just like we did what we could to take them in this like pick sick brittle steel. And then our first barrier was down here. Uh, where are you at? Where are you at? I thought we had one. Uh, I thought we picked up a second bright steel protector. Maybe we didn't, but uh, just the, the combat tricks you would normally uh, want for the style of deck just never appeared. You know, the, uh, the barriers, uh, re uh, the the one cost thing i forget i was wanting to, i got relentless pursuit stuck in my head and i know that's not it but we didn't see those we didn't see the barrier rallies we didn't see uh troll chance we got our hands on some brittle steels but we didn't didn't see like the the troll chant elixir of iron kind of things it was just uh nothing uh going <laughs> nothing going ideally and so i think we navigated okay i i think we did good around like pick 7 here where we were saying like okay you know let's be real we're we're not uh, a, a Fiora OTK style deck today. We need to kind of look out and about and perhaps pick up some better cards, uh, just some general good cards cards as opposed to trying to play towards the OTK. Uh, and then those just never showed up either. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, the the way the things I would be kind of looking for that would just be like, well, we're in Demacia. Maybe we'll find a big epic. We did get one Screeching Dragon. We didn't find any like Alpha Wild Claws. We didn't find any four five. Uh, overwhelm regenerates. Uh, even something like Uzgar would have been nice. Just absolutely nothing showed up this draft. This was uh, quite abysmal, and I'm really not surprised we finished with zero wins. But <laughs> I, I had a I had fun with it nonetheless. Uh, we did get to Unyielding Spirit, a uh, uh, Unscarred Reaver, which is uh, one of the coolest things that you can do in this world. It was nice to at least get the uh, the funsies going together with that, but. Man, that's two in a row where we have not assembled uh, very strong and or winning decks. But that is the downside to sticking yourself with uh, with, with uh, otherworldly journeys and sticking yourself with um, enlightenment karma. But that is going to do it for us today. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the trial. You learned how to uh, suffer through it just as we did. <laughs> you learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching. Uh, this is Bust, and we thank you for being here.